Uh, my name is Tim Pollicott, and uh, I am a beef farmer in Cuyahoga County, New York. Um, we've been on this farm since 2012. Um, this farm was started by Wilson Mitchell Jr. Um, and he milked dairy cows here until 1965 when he got diagnosed with bad knees. And once his, his uh, diagnosis, he, he didn't want to get rid of the cows, so he switched to registered Black Angus. And Wilson just liked the beef and wanted to keep it that way. So our goal, number one goal, is to keep good cattle here. And he always said, quality over quantity. So um, we strive for quality cattle. And we do not make a full-time income to support everything from this operation. Our goal here is for this operation to sustain itself eventually. It's, um, there is no hired labor here. Um, the labor is all family supplied. We run over about a total of 8,000 acres here, but you are in the heart of the virgin tall grass prairie and it is an amazing ecosystem including what you're going to find out large grazing ruminants in in years gone past it was the bison now in modern systems it's cattle i love animals these are my life um i consider and i don't use this term lightly their care and stewardship a sacred obligation I basically have really had no idea how beef was produced. I always saw the cute little pictures of the cows and then ate my hamburger. Um, I really had no idea what the cycle was, so I can honestly say I, I learned a ton. I didn't realize how little I knew. My name is Matt Slagle. I own Conquest Cattle Feeders, and we are a cattle feeding operation of uh, 1,500 head of cattle here. The corn and energy is our specialty. Protein is what they need before they get to us because that lets them build bones, build frame. It's just ground up corn is really what it's looking like. How uh, many different rations do you mix? Four. I put a mineral pack in which has all my vitamins and all those kinds of things in. Then we will put um, modified distillers, which is uh, like a wet distillers that comes out of the ethanol industry. I also put in an, a product that I started to use the last couple months here is uh, Tempeh. It's a, um, it's kind of like tofu essentially. Um, then we feed either cracked corn or dry corn and then high moisture corn. So, and that gives us our diet. It's all computerized. It tells me just exactly how much to put in to, to get the number I need. And <laughs> When they, when they get weaned off the mill, they will strictly go on the grain, which is, they're already getting some grain, which you can open that lid right there in that big tub. It's just a, a grain. It's got some oats and some corn, different stuff in it there. just to watch um, educators that you know maybe aren't as familiar with agriculture be able to get out and see the things um, that happen on a daily basis. It's nice to be able to hear the farmers tell stories and to be able to show their emotions. It shows a different side of agriculture, not just um, what people see and what they expect, but what's actually happening on the farms. I think there's a misconception just about how farmers treat their animals. Um, and I think that what people don't realize is that farmers love their animals and they care for them and they do everything in their power to make sure they're happy and healthy and comfortable. And so when you're able to take people out and show them um, what farmers are actually doing and those connections that farmers are making with their animals, it just really has a huge impact. When we were kids, uh, we got all the horrible jobs to do at a feedlot. One day I uh, worked up the courage to go into dad's office and I asked him, 
Dad, why do you always give us the worst jobs? And he said, it's because I don't want you to grow up and be a feedlot manager. But here we are. Um, we're the largest yards of, of size this far east. I mean, it's good to be educated about what you eat. And we're an open book, and I am so proud of what we do for a living. And I think a lot of times what we do gets misportrayed in the media. And that's why we are just come visit us, come see how much thought and energy and, and care really goes into what you eat. I guarantee you that the same meat that you're putting on your plate, I'm putting on my kid's plate. And it is a great product and we a lot of care and energy and thought goes into it. And so thanks for taking the time to come see us. I'm so happy about the day that you've had. Thanks again. Conceptions is the um, grass fed versus the uh, grain fed. Um, just when they taught us about the whole life cycle of a cow, 95% of it is grass fed. I mean, they finish it off on grain. They can finish it off on gra grass, but to say that it's grass fed beef, every beef animal is grass fed at some point in its life. Um, so we got to experience. Um, this week through the professionals, people who are working in this industry, not people who really aren't educated, but people who have spent a lot of time, a lot of their life, um, educated and dedicated to the beef industry. Um, so what better place to get the right information is from them. Producers and the farmers have to be so intelligent and have, wear so many hats. Um, food safety is at the top of everything that they do, making sure their animals are raised healthy and their environment is healthy and is sustainable. It's like they're all Boy Scouts that are going to leave the earth better than when they found it. I think every educator that has the opportunity to apply for this should do it. They will have their eyes opened. They will just be amazed. Um, it's authentic learning right on the farm. I couldn't get it from a video. It's very tough for another day. Two, one, wave! Now really wave! <laughs> you can wave better than that! <laughs> All right, you're on the farm! Woohoo! Yeah. You're beautiful, thank you! <laughs>